Welcome to this video tutorial. This aims to help you evaluate crime theories to gain those valuable AO3 marks. This video is focusing on labelling sociologists with an overview of each with some explicit evaluation and some bonus analysis to gain those essential AO3. So why is AO3 important? So checking out the mark scheme for the top band, it is useful to note exactly what you need to be doing to get right up there. So you need analysis and evaluation needs to be explicit and relevant. It needs to be developed, for example, by locating the discussion within the debate between perspectives and analysis will show clear explanations. To help you make notes, I've made this handout, so please download it. It is in the comments below, and this will enable you to fill it in as you go along to identify some key points, um, application and analysis and evaluation. So let's kick off with the sociologist you should be familiar with from year one, Howard Becker. And you should see a little bit of a quote there from his book, The Outsiders, and specifying that some actions are labelled as right and forbidding others as wrong. So according to Becker, no act is inherently deviant. Rather, it is the societal reaction to it. It's not the quality of the act the person commits, but the consequences of the application by others, the rules and sanctions to the offender. Deviant behaviour is behaviour that people so-called label. And those that campaign to change the law are called moral entrepreneurs. And they might be social control agencies, and they may also campaign to change the law. And as a result, this creates a new group called the Outsiders with a master status. An example of this was from the US Federal Bureau of Narcotics. They campaigned to change the law against marijuana, highlighting the apparent danger and harmful effects on young people. However, Becker believed that it wasn't just about that, it was more about to spread the influence and the power of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. And he um, concluded by saying that it's not the harmfulness of the act, rather it's the effect of the powerful groups who are able to label and apply the label as being criminal. So this is similar to Lemmet, who we're going to come on to in a bit, um, concepts of secondary deviance, the societal reaction to the act. However, Becker recognised the role of power in creating the deviance, but he doesn't recognise where does this power come from? And this is where you can start to bring in other sociologists. So is it because they're breaking shared norms, functionalist, or is it the power coming from capitalism, Marxist? This theory is also seen as being determinist because not everybody that's labelled as deviant will accept that label. Some will avoid it becoming their master status. So let's move on to Cicerelle, who gets labelled as criminal. So Cicerelle explores the role of the criminal justice system in the labelling process, as not everyone who's labelled will get punished or labelled as a criminal. So he firstly looks at the role of the police within this labelling process, suggesting that they categorise potential offenders. And he refers to this as using typifications or types. And what are these types of typical delinquents, according to the police? These are more likely to be found in working class areas with all the common sense assumptions coming from broken homes, poverty or lax or poor parenting. Now, of course, we know that these are just stereotypes. However, these common sense assumptions means that these areas are more likely to be policed more heavily. It results in more arrests and then leads to people believe that they commit more crime. He also adds that justice is not fixed, but negotiable, that middle class offenders were less likely to be charged. And this is because they were able to use their status, the way that they speak, so speaking in an elaborate code, their connections, their cultural capital, if you like, to be able to negotiate themselves out of being punished and more likely to be um, let off with a lenient, uh, lenient punishment. So as you can see, there is a bias in policing. Working class and ethnic minority areas are more likely to be policed more compared to the middle class who are able to negotiate justice using their material and cultural capital to avoid being charged. However, this lowers the validity of crime statistics. We can see that there is a dark figure of crime that is not being captured. We are not seeing um, middle class crimes, crimes of the powerful, for example. It also ignores crimes of the powerful who are able to successfully negotiate justice. Marxists would argue that it ignores the role of power and the power of the ruling class to make and enforce the laws. So our next example comes from Limit. 
So Lemmert makes a distinction between primary and secondary deviants. Primary deviance is that everybody engages in deviant act at some point, but not all publicly labelled. Whereas secondary deviance is where labelling is, is the result of the societal reaction. And being labelled can be involve being punished, shamed, humiliated, shunned or excluded from society. He uses the um, examples from his study of the Inuits and also his study of paranoia. So let's look at the first one, who have an issue of stuttering in comparison to other cultures. Lemmert believed that it was the importance placed on public speaking and stuttering was seen as being quite humiliating. Due to the pressure placed on perfect speaking from the parents, any children with any minor speech difficulty, the primary deviants, became really anxious about this and this made the stuttering worse. He believed that the parental or societal reaction, the secondary deviants, amplified it or made it worse. To evaluate, he fails to explain primary deviants. For example, why do people offend in the first place, which occurs before they have been labelled? And this idea implies that without labelling the secondary deviants, that the first deviants would not exist. It also implies that those that are deviant are unaware until they are um, labelled by other people. This leads us to our final study from Stan Cohen. So Stanley Cohen believed that the role that the media plays in labelling can have a longer term effect, that of a deviancy amplification spiral. He uses the example of the mods and rockers. These are groups of youth subcultures in the 1960s that the media created a moral panic about. A moral panic is a disproportionate reaction or an overreaction to the behaviour of the youth of the time. It created a feeling that the youth were out of control. In Cohen's research, the media created a folk devil out of the mods and rockers because they were threatening the social order of the time and they needed to be controlled. However, this had the opposite effect. It made all the young people either identify as a mod or a rocker. They started to take part in the clashes that occurred on the bank holidays and basically created further disturbances, even though but, um, Cohen identified it was less than in the first instance. But it created a bigger perceived problem because the media was there to capture it. So in this case, the media has amplified or made bigger the deviants. In analysis, there are other examples of folk devils and moral panics that you might have seen today. Dangerous dogs, fake asylum seekers, single parents have all been classed as a moral panic. However, not all events create a moral panic and Cohen didn't or wasn't able to identify what turned the panic on. Why does the media amplify some behaviours and not others? And in a postmodern society where there is diversity of values and a general lack of consensus, behaviours considered deviants actually no longer shock. So this video has given you an overview of the main labelling theories and if you want a bit more information about them, revise sociology, give, um, give some really good summaries for these. And the focus was on the analysis and the evaluation points that can easily be added to your essays. But I wanted you to just see um, an example of a question that was asked in 2018. It did appear as a six marker. As you can see below, we've got the question and the mark scheme there. So we have looked at um, a range of different viewpoints and this will cover some of the other evaluation points that you may wish to consider whilst you are studying. So massive thank you for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, please comment. And if you want to see any more of my videos, I've put some links in the um, example and the explanation below. Thank you.